Hey, hey, Blue Table fans, Sean here. It is a beautiful Wednesday morning here in Utah. This is a morning program that's on again, off again. Just want you to know that I'm in the studio every single day, taking care of one item at a time. And Blue Table Painting is going along beautifully. We are booking out new projects for June, July, and August at this time. If you are interested in setting something up, contact me at projects at bluetablepainting.com. Uh, this, I, I just randomly opened this to have something on here. This is from Cool Mini or Not. It's a Cthulhu idol. So in case you were looking for a change in religion, uh, think Cthulhu. Anyway, uh, we're off to Fayette uh, 2012 or 212 rather. It's a news and rumor site. It's a really good guy. His name is Gary and uh, he puts up a pretty quality product here. So anyway, uh, Zinch Demonkin are coming up and I'm very excited about this. Uh, in fact, a few years ago, a Lord of Change appeared to me in a dream and uh, had a message for me. And uh, so anyway, don't know why I said that. All right, so here we go. Um, there's uh, some additional rumors around this morning about the rumored Codex Zinch Demonkin. According to the rumors, the release will have a new Lord of Change and a new Sorcerer. Sounds a little familiar, but with extra bits for Thousand Suns. Now I gotta tell you, that would be really cool, because if you go over to the Games Workshop site, and you type in Thousand Suns, because to get Thousand Suns, you've got to um, buy this upgrade pack. And the upgrade pack for $21 is actually pretty good. It comes with a, a full model, uh, a sorcerer, and that's who leads the groups of these automaton uh, Thousand Suns creatures. And quite frankly, all you need is a, a back and some legs, and uh, it makes a full thing. It's uh, a full unit. So, uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's what comes in that. So not bad, but if this came as just plastics as an extra for the other kit, that would be that would that would that'd be pretty cool in my book. So um, let's see here. Let's go ahead and uh, oh, okay. Well, here we're we're over to Bell of Lost Souls, and um, I remember meeting these guys at um, at Adepticon, and uh, I think they're they're regulars there. Uh, there's just so many people, I usually don't uh, get to see them very much. Anyway, um, Zinch Demakin, change we can believe in. Fantastic. Love that art. I've always wondered how they get the, how they get the art going on this. So anyway, uh, so it's along the lines of Corn Demonkin, centered around New Plastic Lord of Change, which obviously is a huge uh, figure. And uh, two head options, two staff options, a hurdling fireball option. Comes only comes with an oval base. Now that's significant because the rumors are that Warhammer Fantasy is going to be changing to round or oval bases. And I have to say I'm pretty excited about that. I'd love to see Warhammer Fantasy go to a lower model count. Because, uh, for example, that Dark Elf army that we're working on, it... Uh, it has like 200 figures in it, and it's like you could have done three 40k armies for the for the same for the same. This is the old Lord of Change. In the upper left here, you can see kind of how that was put together. I remember this guy. I mean, and this was just terrible. But look at all the heads it came with. It came with like six different heads. That's pretty awesome. So yeah, but these things are. That model was terrible. It might make a great herald at this point. Uh, let's see, can I get off of this? Uh, no, I cannot. Here we go. Let's get back there. Uh, let's see if there's some kind of thread here. Zinch Demonkin Roundup. Guy, let's take a look. This is fun. I really like doing this. So, um, let's see here. Two head options, bits for Thousand Suns. I think that's all they got. Now, I think it's pretty pretty early in the, the rumor mill stage. And uh, so let's go back to uh, the Bell of Lost Souls homepage. Why not? All right, Fayette 212 again. 
uh, while that's loading. Leaked images of Space Marine upgrade packs. Awesome. Let's take a look at that. Oh, and they're releasing a Warlord Titan. Now, we've actually made one of these. We, we made a Warlord Titan at BTP many, many years ago. And it has to be scratch built, which is very problematic. And with a model that size, I mean, it's the size of a toddler. It's like three or four feet tall to get it to the, the right scale. In fact, I think the one that Forge World is doing is actually smaller uh, than the, the actual scale of what a Warlord Titan is supposed to, supposed to be. Uh, I think there's a, there's actually one that's bigger than that, in, like an Imper, Imperator Titan or something like that. And uh, so here we go. Let's take a look. See if we can. Oh, wow, look at that art. That's awesome. Next step in evolution. Say yes to that. Uh, <laughs> did, I, did I just say yes to robot sex doll? I don't know. I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, Ultramarines Command Squad. That's pretty cool. I had actually kind of secretly hoped they would do true scale. But if these are 30 millimeter bases rather than 25, look at how the legs are stancing on this. It means these guys, these guys are getting beefier. And quite frankly, I would like to see that. The only downside is that it would, um, it would mean that people that have made these huge collections of Space Marines would, you know, the ones that were obsessive compulsive about it, which is a lot of nerds, and I can talk because I are one, would have to replace their whole armies. They'd have to just redo everything from scratch. So uh, BTB is going to get a lot of inquiries about rebasing, rebasing things. So uh, Dark Angels, let's see. Uh, the Dark Angels also get the upgrade treatment with a plastic frame that includes 20 components. Okay, so that's how they're going to do it, a basic kit and an upgrade kit. And that's not unusual because that's uh, how Games Workshop has, has done it. All right, uh, before, like upgrade kits for things, rather than making whole new, you know, products. So, yeah, Dark Angels have a lot of stuff. All they need now is a good rule set, like Eldar. Eldar kind of like, you know, the other armies are jealous of us. So, uh, there's that. Let's uh, take a look at, let's see, kid, the Ultra Kit photo, Dark Angels Kit. Oh, let's look at Assault Squad. Just a picture here. Oh, we already saw that. Well, I gotta tell you, that's pretty cool. Space Marines are really cool, and sometimes they capture my imagination, but I'm a Xenos man in the end. Forge World, my what a large axe you have. Okay, I can't pass that up. We need to make more battle reports. I just need a couple people to move in and just do battle reports all day long. That'd be awesome. So there you go. Uh, Forge World releases, teases two imminent releases, both armed with ridiculous size hand-to-hand -hand weapons. What? This isn't a, I thought, I thought that was a conversion, but apparently not. Sigismund, first captain of the Imperial Fists. A new demon engine this way walks. I bet a bunch of Ewoks could totally bring him down. Awesome. Oh, look at all that candy, guys. Oh, that's, I'm, I'm actually drooling right now. Uh, to set the stage, uh, I'm sitting in a small kitchen dining room. I'm at, I just finished breakfast, which was some uh, leftover fish, some salmon, and a uh, vanilla chai tea, and um, cold. And that was, uh, that was good stuff. All right, uh, let's move on. Cool Mini, Cool Mini always has some kind of candy on it. Every single day, new releases, great models. Um, Malifaux continues to pump out really cool figures. In fact, I have to say, Malifaux seems to be doing it right. Like they're not, they're not getting out of, they're not getting out of their strength, which is making cool models. Um, and I mean, it's it's unusual because you have these little niche companies that are really. Uh, how do I explain this? They're, they're, they're really small, and they're they're just having fun. They're they're just making figures, whatever it is they please. And I think Ma Malifaux is really the poster child for this for this uh, way of thinking. So there's Cthulhu again. Oh, I came across this a whiskey golem. This is for Malifaux again. So 
don't know. That just that just kind of struck my imagination. So Games Workshop Forge World. Okay, so just a few things here I want to point out for those of you that may be new to the hobby. <clears throat> and before I do that, I want to apologize for the sound quality. I'm doing this on my laptop mic and uh, just getting it done. Uh, at BTP, the videos have always been kind of an afterthought. You know, I just, I put up, you know, whatever it is that we're doing and that's, that's what it is. So anyway, so if you go to the Forge World site, you can oftentimes, so, okay, is it taking me to a whole new page here? I just wanted the drop down. Tau, no, Tau. Anyway, you can find rules on here. So, uh, for example, if we go to Warhammer Tau, and uh, we look up uh, battle suits. I'm just I'm I'm just going to one that I actually know. So the Ivara battle suit. So you go to the entry, and if you look in the description, sometimes you'll see experimental rules for the whatever it is can be found here, and you just go ahead and open that, and uh, it should be a PDF. Yep. In fact, my thing just downloaded, and there it goes opening. So yeah, so you print print these out, print them out and save them right away because uh, you will, as soon as they're, they're published in a book, that's it. So this is kind of where Games Workshop actually does, you know, fan-friendly, uh, on-the-fly upgrades. So here we go. Now, the other thing I wanted to show you is something that exists, and I don't think everyone knows that this exists. Uh, you can get equivalency charts for paints. So you just type in your two types of paints. So I put Vallejo GW equivalency chart. And I'm thinking about this because a client said he wanted his Dark Angels done a certain shade of Games Workshop color. And did we do that? And the answer is yes. We can either look up the equivalency online and use Vallejo paints for it. Um, or, or we can, please let Safe Search be on. Okay. Um, or if you're a client of ours, you can actually just send in the paints that you want us to use. So anyway, this is what that looks like. It just tells you, you know, what the different things are. So elf flesh in Citadel is elf skin tone in Vallejo game color, flat flesh in model color, and in Rackham is craggy skin. Good old Rackham. God bless him. All right, folks, that's what we have going on. The big news for Blue Table Painting this week is I'm pulling out every single army that we have, and I'm going to do kind of a parade of armies, and they're going to be all in the block. I'm going to find new homes for all of them this week. The only exception is probably Drop Zone Commander. I, I, I love those armies. Uh, off the top of my head, we've got uh, Eldar, Grey Knights, a Kador army, and... God, and I, I know there must be at least 10. Um, let's see, what else? Hold on, I can think of it. Uh, a Nurgle Marines army. Yeah, so we have a visitor here. Um, I, I doubt he's going to make any noise. Come here, bud. Come on. You can hear his collar jingling. He's sniffing around for food. You want some food, bud? That's awesome. All right, folks, uh, this is Sean. And I want you to know that uh, life, life does get better. Just, just hang in there. Uh, or better yet, uh, learn to live in the moment because the present moment is, is always good. It's beautiful. Don't let, don't let your mind chatterbox you with all sorts of worrisome scenarios. And uh, just, just enjoy what's happening right now. Uh, and that's... Um, I don't mean it as a preachment. Uh, it's just what I've been finding recently is that uh, my life is a series of really, really, really awesome uh, now moments. So I'll see you all tomorrow.